Max, here at the Electronics Factory Erlangen, AI is a hot topic this year. How, how is AI playing into what you're doing here? AI is actually playing a super crucial role in many processes that we have today. So, for example, here this robot is picking parts by AI. Um, quality control is often done with AI. Um, and also process optimization all the time. Um, so really, I would say even most processes have some kind of alignment with AI today. Now, what we're looking at here, I'm guessing there's a, a digital twin of this. and so, so what's the role with digital twin in AI? So actually for this, it's actually uh, the digital twin is basically the foundation of this application here. Um, so this is actually trained purely on synthetic data. So this robot has not seen a real image during training. So it's completely trained on the digital twin and still runs robustly in the real world. This station alone has more than a million pics. Um, oh, wow. And this is based on the digital twin only. We use similar technology, for example, to do quality control because if you can find a part and see where it is in order to pick it, you can do the same to check if it was, for example, assembled in the right way. So um, we actually use this technology quite a lot and because we can train it directly from the digital twin, um, we basically have no training effort to do so in the first place. Um, so it's a very low cost, easy to install system that is, however, highly robust due to the AI algorithms that we do use, so yeah. How do you see AI playing into sustainability? So exactly this use case here, for example, um, if you wanted to automate something like this five years ago, um, each and every part that you assemble in this line would need to be brought in here uh, with an inlay. Uh, so basically there's a plastic part where all the parts sit in so the robot can just directly pick them up. Oh, so it knows um, which one to pick. So it knows where it is exactly without having to find it. Um, this robot, however, can work with totally chaotic materials. So there is no need to produce inlays here anymore. So actually in this line here, for example, this was the first pilot cell um, and it was actually born from exactly that um, problem because we saw in every other cell you had to design an inlay, make a tool that actually produces that, then produce 100, 200, 500 of those inlays. Um, you have to wash them, you have to get them to the supplier, they have to fill them manually transport them ah, here. So, okay. so, so th this is a huge process chain that just becomes completely um, pointless if yeah. you can do this picking. And so in this line, this was the pilot use case. We are just building up another line and this technology is used in every cell because it's just so ubiquitous to use and it has so much benefit also for the logistic chain. Um, so this is actually something you can use basically in every assembly process with quality inspection or like um, test engineering, where you have pattern um, matching in your test patterns to actually find the real errors. Um, this helps you just um, not do as many errors because you just know the root cause yeah. of your errors, um, but also it makes you find them earlier so you don't produce as much waste, but can actually identify faulty material very early on and just not keep refining it and then throwing it, it away at the end, basically. Um, so your processes become more robust, so yeah. you generate less waste, and you find these errors a lot earlier. Now, given what you've accomplished here at GWE, personally, any particular highlight of a challenge or a technology you've come across? Yeah, so actually um, uh, we have a very challenging process here in Erlangen, uh, which is actually putting the electrical components into the board. So we're talking pins with tens of millimeters of thickness, so very delicate um, and just super small holes with also yeah. tens or maybe hundreds of millimeters of tolerance to actually hit. And we've been actually been able to also solve this with robots and AI and sensor technology. And we are now doing this actually with uh, force torque sensing. So you have like a tactile feedback for the robot. So the robot feels basically what it's doing. And this is actually very cool because this has been a challenge also in research for quite some time. Um, but actually since we can now simulate everything beforehand and make sure that the processes work before we put them in the real system, um, it's not half a year of tinkering and tuning and whatever, but it's actually 
a robust process directly from the start. And this is very eye-opening to see when a robot arm like this actually does like a tactile insertion of a part that's really hard to assemble even by hand. So with all you've done with AI already and the synthetic data and photorealistic and and and, and mm -hmm. what's next? Where, where, where do you see it headed? Well actually there's a lot of uh, extremely promising fields so uh, as I said you can reuse a lot of these technologies for different a wide variety of use cases. You can use it for quality inspection, you can use it in intra logistics for example. As you can see here um, but also um, new models that are coming out, also in other fields. Um, Everybody is talking about Gen AI and large language models. Yep. Um, they can help you write the program for such a machine in super short time. They can actually make a machine be able to tell, for example, the maintenance personnel in clear language what the problem is. Why did it stop? What is the error? Does it have maybe a clue uh, for which to look? Now you get an error code on your HMI and basically look into the manual what happened. Um, this is something you can solve. It um, actually sounds trivial at first, but this is a huge potential gain for factories because um, the longer this machine is in stop, um, the more time and the more money you lose. No, no, uh, no. Also, um, AI just makes huge steps all the time and not just AI, but actually the sensor technology that is also linked with it. So for example, these types of cameras or something, they would have cost tens of thousands of euros just a few years back. This camera on this robot costs about 300 euros. And, and that's like something Fact you can or, use. Or, or there's a magnitude. Yeah, so that's something you can literally use in every machine and not even think about it twice. Um, so this is, I think, where also the scale effect for uh, AI will come from. That it's actually not something you purposely put into somewhere because you need it for that exact use case but it's actually something that's just so easy to use, so straightforward to use and so Thanks. cheap to implement that it's just, you'll just use it everywhere because why not? It is fascinating, you know, the thing about being here in, inside is yeah. that we, hear, we see all the PowerPoint presentations, we hear all the, yeah. the theory, but to just get to see it working um, and what you've accomplished here is, is pretty impressive. Yeah, so I think that's also a big strength of Siemens actually, that we can not only show it to customers, I mean, you can experience it here firsthand, obviously. Um, so that's a big plus. We're not just saying, yeah, this uh, can work, but we can actually show you this is working today to manufacture our products. Um, but actually it gives us also the possibility to have a playground. As I said, this cell for example is then more than a million picks just this cell alone so there's just the possibility to really see if it's industrial grade to really see if this is ready for a customer this is something that you only have if you have your own manufacturing hey good stuff thank you very much yeah sure thank you